Hi everybody, I'm Roberto with Source One Environmental and today we are going to do A to Z on our small diameter repair. Uh, first you're going to want to check your kit contents. Uh, make sure that everything is here that's supposed to be here. In the kit is a lot of instructions and it'll exactly say what you need to do the repair. Uh, so you'll get your fiberglass, your, your resin, uh, protective sleeves, um, these will go around the packer when we do our dry run and also when we do our live repair. Tape to attach the protective sleeve. Uh, a spatula um, to spread the resin on the fiberglass. Green ties for this particular kit. Rubber gloves so it doesn't get on your hands. Um, and there's two pair in here so you can take off. And then equipment you're going to need to do the repair you'll need your packer which is right here it's a two inch packer we're using today uh, your push rods which is how we're going to put the system into place and then also uh, a delivery method for the air so we can inflate your regulator uh, so we can control the amount of air that gets to the packer you'll need some wire cutters um, an air hose which we have here. Um, air compressor, uh, just a small pancake compressor will be perfectly fine for this repair. Uh, uh, our cleaner for the sewer so we can clean it before we put our repair in the ground. Um, you will need your camera to do the repair and then pull cable as well um, and that'll be attached to the end of our packer. Um, these are our push rods and then we pull our packers uh, once we've installed the patch and it's cured, we pull them out by the cable. All right, now that we've had a chance to check our equipment, uh, make sure we have everything we need, checked our kit contents, we have everything on this end. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is, is work right off our box. It has a checklist on the back, so everything that you're gonna do to do a, a good repair is on this box. So the first step is testing our equipment. And we want to make sure that when we're doing this, we're testing all the equipment that's going to be in the ground when we're doing our repair. Because uh, we're checking the push rods, we're checking the packer, the regulator, the compressor, the airline. Um, we're checking them all at the same time when we do this. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make a test pipe. So you can see, just made some small holes lined up with the, the pack out lines on the packer. And the reason we do that is to make sure that it's touching the inside of the pipe. Um, so when we check our pressure, we'll make sure that it's completely packed out and it's the stiffness we want it to be to have a, a good pipe patch. Um, just push the push rods to connect them. And then same thing with backside here. And then we'll put our air to the packer. And the thing we're looking for is, is for it to be hard. We don't want it to be soft where we can actually push it in and then slightly bulging out of the holes that we made there then we know we're going to have good contact with the patch when we go to do our install. Alright, now that we have tested our equipment, uh, the next thing we're going to do is transfer our mark. Uh, and when we do that, we'll take our camera head and we'll put it in the center of the two pack out lines. This allows you to have half your repair on one side of the brake in the line and then half your repair on the other side of the brake so that you don't, uh, don't miss it and get full coverage. So when we do this, put our camera head down and then we'll take our tape and wherever that mark is, you will actually put it right on the push rod. Leave a tab so you can take these off easily when you're done. And then also when you're doing this, you're going to make sure that you tape every joint. So anywhere there's a joint, you're going to tape. And the reason for that is so we don't catch on offsets in the pipe and the push rods don't come apart. 
do the same thing with your cable. We want everything to be as small as we can possibly get it uh, when we're doing our repair so we don't get hung up on anything. It makes it easy to install and also to get the packer out when the install is, is finished. So just like that, this is our hard mark. This is where we're gonna stop when we're pushing our repair into place. And then taping all the joints is very important so they don't come apart. All right, now that we've transferred our measurement, we've actually done the next step already. We've laid out all our pipe patch materials. Uh, we're gonna prepare our packer. Um, and remember we get two of these protective sleeves. Uh, one is gonna be for our dry run and then one is going to be for our live install. Um, so very easy to put on. And then I cheat on one end just so there's a little bit of rubber exposed. And then all you're going to do is center your packer inside the plastic. And then when you do that, one side will go down, one side will go up. And then this is where the tape comes in handy. And when we're doing this, we're really stretching that tape. We want to secure this as best we can so that we can pull it out after the pipe patch has cured. And then put a tab on there too so you can get it off. And we're going to do the same thing on the other end. And we got to make sure that the same edge that went up on one side also goes up on the other edge. And then the other one goes down. I'm going to tape this end as well. Make sure we leave our tab. And then the last step when it comes to this is making tiny slits in our plastic because we've actually trapped air and we want to be able to wrap our patch on as tight as we possibly can. So either with your snips or a knife, just make sure you cut away if you're going to use a knife. We're going to make quarter inch slits in each of those fins that we made when we attached our plastic. Now all, the plastic, or now all the air is out of the plastic and now you can wrap on your patch tightly. Now that we've prepared our packer, the next step is performing a dry run. This is really important to be able to know for sure that you can get your packer and patch to the point of repair during a live run. So taped up, plastic on, cable will be connected we'll actually push this into place to make sure we can get to our spot of repair. Uh, once we've done that and we know that we can get there, we'll pull this out, visually inspect this, um, see if there's anything that's concerning, large gouge marks, anything like that, you want to check this. Once you've done that, repa replace the plastic, okay? You're going to want to take this off and put the second sleeve onto this. So once we've done that, we have our prepared packer. We'll start to get everything laid out so it's a little bit better during our install. So stretch out all your ties. They send more in the kits than we actually need to do the repair. So in case you break one, there are extras. We have our gloves. Tape is ready with the tab. Pull this out and then we'll actually shove that right in the box. Pull our tabs off. Don't pull the pin yet, we're not quite there. And then once we have everything laid out, then we'll be ready to mix our resin. All right, I just wanna take a quick second to talk about our cure chart. Um, it's gonna be on every kit. This is a winter kit. Um, each kit, uh, winter, summer, or rapid, is gonna be a little bit different. Um, uh, so you wanna check these uh, prior to wetting out. 
um, based on the ambient temperature outside. And then we also recommend using some sort of temp gun to check uh, the surface you're going to work on. Um, you know, maybe you're in a warm climate and you need to even ice this uh, resin, um, but always checking and making sure that the temperatures are low on everything, and that includes the packer. Uh, you don't want to leave it in the sun, um, exposed out there. It's black, rubber, it's going to get extremely warm. And if we were to wet this out and put it on a hot packer, it's going to reduce our working time immensely. So we always want to refer back to this and it has working time and also cure time on here. So um, we always refer back to this when it comes to pulling patches when they're, when they're done. Uh, so now our compressor's on, we have all our airlines ran, our packers prepared, um, so we are ready to wet out. So we'll put our gloves on. And then again, don't forget, you get enough gloves for the amount of people to double glove. And then all you're gonna do with this is there's a small gap in the bottom of this Mylar pouch and we'll just pull it and mix the two together. When we're doing this, we want to pull all the material out of the corners. This is all pre-measured, pre pre-weighed. So we want to make sure we mix all these materials together. And this bag being for a two inch repair, smaller than our other, so doesn't take as long to wet out. So no chunks, no nothing goofy, no swirling in it. It's all one solid color. So we are mixed and ready to go. So all we're doing is moving it to one side. Half of this will go on one side. Usually I have a helper to hold this bag up, but that'll work. And then long strokes. We want to get this on the patch as quick as we can without making a giant mess. We want to cover all the white spots on here. And we are pushing this into the fiberglass mat as we do this. We don't want any excessive pulling, pooling rather, on this because it's all just going to end up at the edges of the patch. So just want it to be nice and consistent. Now we will flip this over, use the last little bit of resin, Like I said, you want to do this quickly, but not so quickly that you make a big mess or undersaturate the material. So it's pretty uniform. And then all we're going to do is fold in our work surface. Let's see why that's important here in a second. Grab our packer. And then we also want to make sure that we don't trap any of this plastic. So I always start by folding one of the edges down and kind of laying it on one edge. 
and then I fold the other side up. And then I'll just run my finger down the back side. And when we roll this, we want to get it as tight as we possibly can get it. Especially on these small repairs, um, you don't want anything bulky on the ends. Make sure it stays inside the pack out lines. And then, so there's rolled on nice and tight. I'm actually gonna take my first set off now. And then put two in the front, because that's the edge that's gonna take the most abuse. So two about an inch apart in the front. One in the center of the repair, and then one on the tail end. And then all we're gonna do is use the weight. There's not much weight, but use the weight of the packer, and then cinch down and twist. Twist, and then a little half twist, and then pull it up tight, actually. And same thing, so cinch down, twist, twist, and then a little half twist. And then a very, very important part is snipping these. You want to leave a little bit of something there of the twist. You don't want to cut right up against the, the patch because these will just pop right off when you're pushing it into place and we don't want that. They're made to break, but we don't want them to break that fast, so. Nose, and then one thing we want to be careful of is rubbing this patch as we go inside of our pipe. So just make sure that front edge gets in there clean. Get into our spot. So this is where we would stop in a real, real install, not a tabletop. We'd stop right here at the edge of the pipe where we made our mark our hard mark. Get this all out of the way. And then we go to our predetermined PSI. And earlier we decided that was 30 PSI. And we're there. And now we would refer back to our cure chart and determine based on temperature when we would pull our patch. That's it. Thank you.